Welcome to Got Invention Radio. I'm your host, Brian Freed, and tonight we have an inventor who has a product that has sold about 3.4 million units. He's on QVC all the time. You've seen his product on TV. You've probably seen it in the retail stores. He is Michael Lindell, the inventor of My Pillow. Welcome to the show, Michael. Oh, it's good to be here. This is this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I know you're uh, you're a big fan of uh, Got Invention Radio. Thank you, and uh, we're happy yeah. to have you on our show. Yeah, that's uh, I've been wanting to get on. This is uh, to uh, to help other inventors, and and uh, this is this will be a fun night. Great. So, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know before you came up with this pillow, when you were having all kinds of uh, back problems and neck problems, you're going to tell us all about that, but you're a pretty interesting guy. Why don't you tell the inventors out there the your background? Well, my background, um, I uh, I started out. I was uh, I had the first. Uh, I've always been an entrepreneur. I started out, uh, you know, having everybody have a paper route, and and then I uh, I had a carpet cleaning business, and then I went into and I had a lunch wagon business for, and uh, then I then I purchased bar restaurants. Um, and I just kept uh, kept doing different things. I've always wanted to just work for myself and, uh, and uh, be an entrepreneur. And it's uh, I've been doing that my whole life. That's was, great. Uh, so what happened uh, that made you come up with this this pillow? And by the way, I love your pillow. I I feel you do? Like, okay. I feel like it's got uh, some some meat to it. You know what I mean? It's it's got like mm -hmm. the inside of it is actually it's it's nice to touch and when you're laying on it it actually feels very comfortable. Why did you come mm -hmm. up with this pillow and it's you know what the people while we were chit-chatting during the day in uh, in some of the social media uh, activity, people were saying, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe somebody came up with a different pillow." <laughs> so tell us why you right. came up with it and tell well, us what it's about. Well, this goes this goes back to when I was a teenager, and when I was a kid, I remember pillows for you know that it seemed like pillows worked then. And I, when I was a teenager, I would actually lay on department store floors and look around, make sure nobody was watching, and I would try different pillows. And so. I think it was probably my calling way back then, but and I even uh, I even bought one. I spent my whole paycheck in nineteen in the late nineteen seventies on a on a pillow, and it didn't work. And then uh, I had, I had throughout my life I had different uh, you know different things happen to me. I was I'd see a chiropractor, and three days later I would need a I would need to have be readjusted again, and and I knew it was my pillow, and then. And, uh, so, you know, it was kind of out of necessity. I'd wake up in the morning, my neck would hurt, I'd have a migraine, I might have a, feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. And then, uh, you know, during the night I would just flip-flop all night long. And when I, so when I first started to work on this uh, in 2004, there was a couple of years there. It took a couple of years, but I, um, uh, I made the first pillow myself just for out of necessity for me or something you know, I, there was nothing out there. Absolutely nothing. I had tried every pillow known to man. So and, it was it was neck pain. And, it was neck pain. It was back pain. Yeah, now you yep, talked I had, about I had both. You talked about right. being in the in the bar business. So was it from picking up all the bottles of the whiskey and the wine and all that stuff, or was it drinking it and well, falling we, off the bar stool? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a little of both back then, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. I was I worked long hours back then, so it was always, we were always on our feet. You know, we were always you know you never sat down. And uh, I had other things happen too. I had uh, numerous accidents where where, uh, but it but the uh, you know it's just the chiropractor. I was probably from the accidents where I was seeing for my lower back and neck, and and I just couldn't. But basically, I couldn't get good sleep. And and when I first came up with the pillow, I, when I came up with the one that worked for me. The kids kept always stealing it, and and uh, I would, uh, you know, I realized everybody had that problem. I started asking around. Everyone's got the same problem. I asked my friends when I went, uh, you know, I'd go duck hunting or, or uh, fishing, and I'd ask them. I said, yeah, I said, you guys have these problems with sleeping with pillows, and everybody seemed to have the same problem. Hmm. And I started. It took two years, or well, a little less than two years, I guess. Um, I tried everything. I wanted it to, I wanted it to be the best pillow ever made i wanted it to have everything if you walk down the streets of america and say what would you like to see in a pillow whatever came out of their mouth my pillow would have and i was very 
passionate about that. Okay, so tell us why and tell us what you did to make that pillow and what makes it so unique and different than anything else out there. Well, first, I'll, I'll tell you why it's unique. Um, and, and I thought the same thing, too. You know, the, the, uh, I thought, how could I, you know, how could I make up something that hasn't been invented already when, when big pillow companies, I mean, that's one of the, um, I think pillows are one of the most sold commodity or non-disposable commodity that doesn't work. You know, they don't work. And, and I, what I did is the people, um, I mean, my pillow, you can move it. You can move the patented pillow. I got a patent on it. I got a U.S. patent on it. It's a utility patent. But you can move the, the patented pillow wherever you want, whether you're side, back, or stomach sleeper, and it holds that position, and it keeps your neck straight for you as an individual. It also stays cool. You can wash and dry it. You can, uh, um, if someone said, well, does it have value? Well, I have a 10-year warranty. Um, and it stays good during that whole time because you can wash and dry it. And then I have a 60-day money-back guarantee because I wanted to give people value too, or you know, give people a guarantee on it because they were, they were. We all have six pillows per person per household in the United States alone, and they just keep piling up. It's a big pillow pile, and it's, uh, which I find, uh, you know, very interesting when I found that found that out from the National Sleep Foundation. But it didn't surprise me because of the. Uh, the shows I had done and talked to tens of thousands of people and they, you know, everybody's the same. They all have the same problems with pills and they all have the same, they've tried everything and people were set up at the time I started. I really found a hole in the market is what I did. Okay. All right. So this is a got invention radio and we have inventors that are at all different stages of the invention process. There are resources for, for inventors out there listening and we want to hear your story. Michael, so tell us, okay. when you first came up with this idea that you wanted to have a better pillow, what did you do first? Okay, the first thing I did is I, um, I actually, I kind of did it in reverse. I thought of the name first. <laughs> I, had, uh, I thought of the name My Pillow, and, and I had it, actually wrote it on a piece of paper all over the house and, uh, and tried different ways to the logo, but that's... Probably not the way the way to do it to name a product before you even have it developed. No, you know what? That, you're but, you're absolute. I I have to say that we share the same. I didn't know that that's what you did first. We share the same yeah. philosophy. You know why I call I when I come up with an invention, I right away I come up with a name. You know why? Because I want to make it real. I want to start right. living and breathing it. I want to see it. You know, when I wrote my book, you and your big ideas, I had a sticker on my monitor for a year that said you and your big ideas that's the name of my book i have to see it and i want to bring it to life so i respect well, then maybe then maybe we're doing it the right way you know? <laughs> so that's, that's great i mean yeah. my pillow is i mean i you make it all in one word it's not even a space between the uh the y and the p right 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 and when i got that registered trademark i applied for that myself online and i i didn't think i'd get it this was in 2005 that i actually applied or 2006 and and it's such a, you know, so generic, just my, hey, where's my pillow? I just thought it sounded cool to say, where's my pillow? And, and, and to have that name. And, and I went and, uh, you know, I applied for that name first before I had even, I had a concept of what I wanted in my head of what I wanted the pillow to do. And, uh, but I applied for the name first and uh, waited to get the registered trademark for, I don't know, a couple of year and a half or two years, but, Okay. But the, uh, once once I had the uh, I did that and then I I made one mistake there though is I didn't get I should have got all the mypillow.com and all the different variations I would suggest that to anybody that names their invention to get to get all the variations of the dot coms and and buy them because they're cheap to buy and then if you if you end up having to buy them back down the road from other people that got them after you after you got your name you end up paying a lot a lot of money for them. <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> definitely dot, dot com rules out there. Uh, there, it is good to have other extensions, but for the most part, you know, dot coms are, are people definitely are uh, very familiar with them. But sure, it's right, it's right. cheap enough. Then, it's cheap enough at, at what, the start. Yeah. But what I did then is I um I tried to, I I tore foam. I got I tried over ninety, uh, I think it was ninety four different kinds of foam. Over a course of five six months, I mean, or maybe maybe a little less, and and I I wanted a pillow where you could move the stuff and it would stay kind of like kind of like sleeping on a down pillow, but it wouldn't go flat. You know, that was I I seen 
you know, I really, I really got familiar with what I was, you know, I was in with my, with what I was going to invent. So I would, I checked out, I would, you see me in bed, bath, to be honest, I was in all these stores checking out pillows, checking out their other, you know, the other products that I was going to go up against. And I still hadn't had mine finished. And, and, and then I finally, uh, uh, I got down, to, I finally got one that was right, and then I couldn't get it apart. You know, if you, by wherever you moved it, it wouldn't come apart. So then I was kind of back to the drawing board. I had so many setbacks. Uh, once I got to where I had the right material to go inside it, I didn't have a machine that made those size cuts that I needed. So that's the part I had to go out and actually come up with a machine that would do that and there was nothing already out there on the market that would do that so okay. michael i wanted was, to ask you when you were when you were sourcing or when you said you tried 90 different foams an inventor mm -hmm. that comes up with an idea and you let's say with with uh your pillow and wanting to put something inside you know as far as mm -hmm. foam where did you go to find 90 different types of foam to test i went to a i went to a um you know, I kind of got lucky, but I, I, you, you, nowadays you can go online. You go online and you look up. Uh, it's hard to get through to the manufacturers. You're, you're spot on there of, of different things. So I, I went to a, a fabricator um, that was in Minneapolis, and he kind of guided me through it. And that's, you know, um, getting the, you know, he was kind of going there and asking for something else and asking for something else. But it was a, it was a lot of trial and error, but it was a, Basically, I, you know, I just went online, and you can't. I couldn't get through to the big manufacturers. Obviously, I can't go. Hey, I want to buy one stick of foam. You know, <laughs> right. they don't even publish their numbers. A lot of the manufacturers. But, sure, one good resource but, for inventors. I'm not, uh, and you went. You went local. That's great. One, yeah, I went local. I went local because I'll tell you what. If you are an inventor, you want to go. You want to get. You want to go local to tr at least in the beginning to try and. Uh, because you're going to be going back and forth if you're trying to, like I did, I had so much experimenting to do to get that first prototype made. That first prototype, that was the hardest thing to get that made. Once I did get it made, though, I didn't have many tweaks. It's, a, it's almost the same pillow you see on the market right now as it was back then. Okay. Um, I didn't I didn't launch it until it was 100% ready, and I and uh, and once it uh, and then there was. You know, it took a while to get to get the machine. There's been there's there was markable improvements on the machine, and that makes the cuts that for the uh, the you know the inside fill. But right, yeah, but it I was a long to... it was a long process. Okay, I wanted to share a couple quick resources, Michael. You said that you went local. One way inventors, we've had uh, one of our guests from the past, uh, ThomasNet.com, which is the old Thomas Registry now online. What you do is you mm -hmm. put in, like, if Michael was looking for a foam fabricator or foam mm -hmm. factory manufacturer, you would put in mm -hmm. foam manufacturer or whatever the material is that it's made out of, and you see if right. you can find somebody local, and if not, then go a little bit further out, and uh, and they have websites and phone numbers on there, and you call them up, and you see if, if uh, they'd be willing to work uh, as a contract uh, or, or just work on a project to see if they can help you. Um, mm -hmm. Another way also, it's great to do local, but if you do have somebody that has a connection or you plan on doing a decent amount of production, whether it's in the beginning or during your invention, if you are going to be working with somebody outside of the country, there's always Skype. Uh, me personally, I've, I've had uh, factories take uh, Skype on their computers and walk around the factories and show me exactly what they were doing. You know, oh, so, Absolutely. This this day and age, there's a lot of uh, you know you right. can almost have the other part of the world right in front of you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I okay. didn't have that. I didn't have that, I didn't have that luxury, but I had. Uh, but but it, it is it is nice to see. I mean, even if you're seen on Skype, just to see the things you know live. You know. Sure. Um, well, nothing beats in, nothing beats in person, of course, and that's that oh, was yeah, your that right, was your point, right. keeping it local. So but, but now, that's a good, but that's a good point. So now you now you uh, you found this factory that had the the foam and they had some machining to be able to kind of put some pieces together for you to test out what what you do next michael well i was just so you know i was doing all the testing myself i would get the raw materials from them and i did all my own testing in a garage testing and... like sleeping like falling asleep on... <laughs> no no i would test the, i knew what the pillow needed to do and it was day after day trying different different um different fills, different foams, 